What's up guys, I'm JT Shaver, and that was a quick little video using a couple of the lenses that I'm gonna be talking about today. These aren't some 5,000 or even $500 lenses that pros use, it's pretty much the opposite. They're some of the cheapest lenses that you can buy. On top of that, they're extremely easy to get a hold of. Every lens has its own character, and some of the modern lenses are just so sharp and technically perfect that they lose some of that feel that gives you a filmic or cinematic look. You can make a lot of changes in post-processing to give a filmic look, but changing the analog signal before it even hits the sensor gives you a totally different feel. There's a couple different lenses that I'm gonna talk about today, one of which I picked up after watching a video by Caleb of DSLR Video Shooter. I got this lens on eBay for 26 bucks shipped, and I'm not sure exactly how far it dates back, but it's at least 30 or 40 years old. This is a Soviet Union era lens called the Indostar 61, and it's a 52 millimeter f2.8 lens with an M39 mount. These lenses are really plentiful on eBay, and they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes with different focal lengths, and like I said, they're really inexpensive. This one has hard stops on the aperture ring, so you get a really nice, satisfying click when you change between f2.8 all the way up to f16. Most of these lenses are an M39 or M42 mount, but luckily adapters for these to modern mounts are only about 10 bucks. One great thing about these older lenses is that they work on full frame cameras so you're not getting a really big vignette around the whole edge of your image. You can also switch to APS-C or Super 35 mode and use just the center of the lens, which is typically the sharpest. Granted, the sharpness is not why you're gonna be picking up one of these lenses in the first place. Something else I found interesting about these old lenses is that the minimum focus distance is honestly really bad. Compared to modern lenses, it's about double the distance from the front of the lens to the object that you're recording. Now, when you're using an adapter, it pushes the lens even farther from the sensor of the camera, and usually that acts like an extension tube, which allows you to focus even closer. But even with an adapter on, the closest you can focus is around two feet or so. Obviously, this lens is 100% manual, but that's what makes it so fun to use and so inexpensive. Over the past few years, modern companies have been creating lenses like this, including Seven Artisans, Pergear, Yongnuo, and more. So, the second lens that I picked up is a 25mm f1.4 lens from Pergear. There are some things about the modern lens that I prefer over the old ones and vice versa. Most of the modern lenses are designed for an APS-C size sensor. So if you have a full frame camera that supports it, you'll have to turn to APS-C mode or Super 35 mode for video. Now that'll give you a crop factor, so a 25 millimeter lens on an APS-C is really equivalent to about a 35 to 40 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. Now the Pergear lens is a wider aperture at f1.4, but that's kind of equivalent in depth of field to an f2.8 on a full frame camera. And that's just based on how far you have to move the camera away from your subject to get the same framing. However, you will get the benefit of an f1.4 letting in more light so you can shoot at lower ISOs or just in lower light conditions. The modern lenses like this are a little more expensive and this one was 68 bucks but there's a few things you have to keep in mind. One is that these come with all the modern mounts available, so the Sony E mount, the Canon EF mount, and so on. That means you don't have to spend 10 or $15 on an adapter, so it just brings the price difference down a bit. And obviously, if the lens is new, you get some kind of warranty just in case something goes wrong. Another really important thing that I've noticed is that the modern lenses have a much better minimum focusing distance. So you can get really close to your subject and blur the background out really easily. The lens flare on all of these lenses is pretty bad, but that's kind of what makes them what they are. Another bonus to all of these lenses is that they're smaller and lighter, so they're easier to travel with. Because they're lighter, they're also compatible with more gimbal setups and things like that too. What I find really interesting about the screenshots from the video that I made is that they're really not that sharp. There's some chromatic aberration and other imperfections, but you don't really notice when you're watching the video. That's also part of the appeal of these lenses is that they add some character, whether it's subconscious or not, and just gives a special feel to your videos. Insanely sharp, and crisp modern lenses have kind of a digital look, so if you're filming something and you want a warm, nostalgic feel, or it's just set 50 or 100 years ago, I highly recommend trying one of these small manual lenses out. If you do want to pick any of these lenses up, I'll have affiliate links in the description, and it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help me create more videos like this. Leave a comment and let me know if you plan to pick one of these lenses up and what projects you can see them working well for. That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.